So it's come to my attention that quite a lot of you guys are interested in the Panasonic S5 videos I make here on my channel. And I've also been asked a couple of times to make a video about my settings and how I set up my S5 for my professional work. So in this video, this is what we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna be going through exactly how I've set up my S5 to make the whole workflow with it as seamless and as streamlined as possible. So as you may already know, you can actually set custom modes on your Panasonic S5 using the top dial, selecting either C1 or C2 two or even C3 if you want to go there as well. Um, now, if you are someone like me who shoots a lot of photo and video, um, then and you're not already utilizing this, of course, then you definitely should utilize it because what it allows you to do is basically switch between a bank of settings for whatever you're shooting. So for me, I have C1 set up for photo and C2 set up for video. And each of those custom modes have different shortcuts and different function buttons, uh, keys set uh, to make that particular discipline easier for me and a lot quicker. So I won't go into a massive detail about how you actually set up your custom modes but basically all you do is you set the settings you want for that custom mode and then you go into your menu you go down to the spanner icon then down to the gear icon then press save to custom mode and then it'll give you a list of the custom modes you have available so c1 c2 and then the three parts of c3 and then you can pick one of those and then when you actually click that custom mode, it will give you a overwrite current settings or you know, you sure wanna say this to that setting. And you can also actually edit the display title as well. So if you're someone that likes to keep things neat and name things, then you can do that as well, which is really nice. So like I said, I have uh, my C2 set up for video and C1 set up for photo. Therefore, they are labeled as such. So now you actually know how to set up custom modes on your S5, let's look at ways to make those custom modes work for you in the best way possible. Of course, the aim of using any camera is to make sure that you're diving into the menu system as little as possible. So that means having all the actual settings that you use on a regular basis assigned to custom buttons so that you don't need to keep on jumping back to a menu and then back out again. So let's start off with my video custom settings since I use more of those nitty gritty features on the S5 for video than I do for photo. So if you go to the gear icon on your Panasonic S5, and then go to the first menu on the wheel icon, if you like, um, you'll see the FM button set menu. And basically that gives you a setting to go to either the uh, settings in record mode or play mode. Now, of course, what we're trying to do is set it up for our actual usability when we're actually shooting. So therefore we want uh, to go to the record mode menu. And then when you click that, you'll be shown a nice diagram of all the custom buttons on your S5 body and exactly what they're mapped to at this current point in time. So of course, from here, you can actually configure all of those custom buttons the way you like it in this menu however I don't actually think that's the most effective way to do this um, if you back out of this menu you can actually customize any button you want simply by holding on to it so let's say for example you want to set your right d-pad button to I don't know let's say audio levels for example what you got to do is just hold press and hold that button and it takes you to the page to go ahead and configure that. So that means that basically any button that is customizable, all you have to do is just press and hold it down in the live view screen, and then you'll get the um, custom function button menu show up. And I think that's a really quick way to actually set it all up since you're actually sort of seeing how you feel about that placement and stuff. So that's the way I'd recommend actually changing those custom buttons. Of course, this means that you can go in and do this for every single button that you want to customize yourself for your shooting. And then once you've done all your customization by simply pressing that particular button, holding it, and then selecting the function button menu set you want to from that menu then um, of course please remember to go back and save that to the custom mode because if you don't save it and then you switch to a different mode let's say like manual or another custom mode then all of those settings will be lost and they'll disappear forever so it is absolutely essential that you remember to go back and save that to your custom mode when you do this okay so now you know exactly how to change the custom buttons and also set them to custom modes let's talk about the settings that I actually use and how I have my s5 configured because I actually think that I've got it set up in a really nice way for both photo and video. So let's start off with video. Um, for my video custom button settings, I have it as follows. So you basically click the up on the D-pad and it brings you to the record quality. The reason why I have it set like this is because I like to flip between uh, 25p 4K 10 bit and 50p 4K 10 bit. Um, and then having this assigned to a button means I can jump between the two really quickly. Now it's also worth mentioning that I do have my camera in the video custom mode set to shutter angles. And what this means is that I can essentially change the frame rate without having to change the shutter speed to get the 180 degree rule because I just leave it on 180 degrees. And if you don't know how to uh, do 
that, basically just go to the image quality one menu on the little video camera, go down to SS gain operation and then set it to angle ISO. And that's basically gonna set shutter angles for when you're in video mode. So next I have my down D-pad button set to my sound record level adjustment. And that's because sometimes I use an array of mics. Uh, with this camera, I can use a built-in mic. Sometimes I can use a 3.5 millimeter um, shotgun mic on the top of the camera. And I could also use an XLR mic. So being able to access um, audio levels is really essential for me without having to dive into any menus. And then next when I press left on the D-pad, it takes me to my picture profile. Um, the reason why I had this set up like this is because I jump a lot between scene like D and V-log, um, depending on what I'm shooting. So therefore having that there is really nice for me. And then on the right D-pad, I have it set to image area video because sometimes I like to get a little bit extra reach out of my uh, lens. So that means I can very easily switch from a full frame to an APS-C crop and then get that 1.5 uh, crop as a sort of zoom. So I like to utilize that and have that set to a custom menu, um, a custom button, sorry. And then the only other button I have set to a different function from out of the box is the exposure compensation button on the top of the camera. And um, that's basically because I shoot everything in manual. I don't really use um, any of the sort of um, priority mode. So therefore the compensation button becomes sort of useless. So I decided to make use of that real estate and I actually set that to my image stabilization for in camera. So that means I can really quickly just with a touch of a button, turn it off in camera and on in camera. And the reason why I'd like to do this is because I like to use my S5 on a gimbal and I don't like to have the in-body image stabilization set um, and active when I'm actually using a gimbal because I think sometimes it gives you some wobbly corners. Um, and of course I have the gimbal already smoothing out the footage for me anyway, so I don't need it done twice. Um, so yeah, that's the only other button I have set up um, custom wise. And then going into my Q menu. So the Q menu I've set up so I can see everything like all those sort of features but on a sort of um, a nice panel so I can have a nice sort of outlook at ex exactly what um, each setting is doing at that time um, so of course I have my record quality um, I have my photo style and then I also have the image area video but I also have the peaking sensitivity because sometimes I like to rank up the sensitivity as much as it can go for the peaking um, and I also have the AF custom setting for video set as well because sometimes what I'm shooting changes quite a lot so that means I could be shooting something static like what you're seeing now or I could be filming something where there's a lot of movement so therefore I want to make the sensitivity a little bit higher on the AF custom setting. Um, I also have the live cropping on my Q menu because I absolutely love using this feature for product shots. It's really, really helpful um, to be able to set this in the Q menu so that I can press live cropping and then have that do its thing in camera. If you don't know what live cropping is, um, I'll leave a card to a video where I talk about it a little bit more. And then of course I have slow and quick setting set in my Q menu as well so that if I do switch to S and Q on the top dial, I can access the slow and quick settings without having to go into the menu as well. And this is really good for when I'm shooting at higher frame rates and I find it really nice to be able to go into the quick menu without having to you know dive in anywhere else even when I am using the S and Q function. If you're wondering how to actually set up your Q menu and customize what's on it then all you got to do is go to the gear icon in the menu, go to uh, Q menu settings and then you can go down to item customize for video in this case, select it and then you can change whatever you want on there. So that is really helpful and very easy to do. Okay, now let's talk about the custom settings I have set up for C1, so my photo mode. And this one's actually not really that complex. Um, it's very much a stripped back version of C2 in the sense that I don't really use um, all the sort of like little features and stuff for photo purely because I shoot everything manual. So therefore, it's a lot more sort of explanatory um, in that sense. And I shoot everything in RAW. So therefore, switching between picture profiles and all that sort of stuff doesn't really apply when you're working with a RAW workflow with photos. But what I do have set up is I have the up D-pad set to my focus bracketing and um, that means that I can really quickly uh, you know bracket a shot whether it's focus or exposure and um, I use that quite a lot and then I have the down t-pad set to my high resolution image mode because as you guys know you can actually shoot 96 megapixel stills with the S5 when you use this mode so I like having that set to one of my custom buttons and then when I press the right d-pad it takes me to my silent mode for silent shooting I like to be able to access the silent shutter as quickly as possible because sometimes, let's say I'm working in a situation where you don't want to hear any sort of camera shutter or camera clicks, then it's really handy if you have to just quickly select it and put the silent mode on and then you, there you go, I'm in silent shooting mode. Of course, feel free to set up your S5 exactly how you want it, but I just wanted to show you guys exactly how I've got mine set up because I found this to be the most easy way to use this camera. Um, every single setting that I use on a regular basis has been assigned to a custom function button mode within either 
my photo mode or my video mode. So that means that whenever I'm shooting photo or video, I rarely go into the menu, which saves me a lot of time and a lot of hassle when I just wanna get the shot. So I hope you guys found this video somewhat interesting, entertaining or useful. And if you did, then please consider subscribing to the channel because I will be making a lot more videos about the S5 and the S series line of cameras. And hopefully I shall see you in the next video. Thank you.